Hello everyone, I'm Shreya Rajshekar and I welcome everybody here on behalf of DepSoc and Team Inferno. On the occasion of World EV Day, we have collaborated on engaging on an important aspect that is sustain sus sustainability as a responsibility. World EV Day is celebrated for e-mobility and the importance to engage on more sustainable transport, right? So uh, just giving a glimpse of how the DepSoc works, we have usually two main competing debate, debating styles, that is British parliamentary and Asian parliamentary debating, where we also attend uh, national debating competitions. Today's se session is going to be on the Asian parliamentary style of debating, where one team is the government who is for the motion and the other team is against the motion who is the opposition team. There will be three speakers in each team who will speak for seven minutes explaining their stance. Uh, the, Main adj uh, it will be the chair on the adj panel who will deliberate the verdict of the debate with other adjes if and so present. A POI or point of information can be asked from the other team for more engagement and questioning on their stance. Uh, three motions are given in prior to the AP debate starting, and on the preference of each team, one motion is chosen to be debated on. The preparatory time for Asian parliamentary debate is 30 minutes. And with all that being said, I request Deeksha, who is chairing this session, to take over. Thank you so much. Uh, good evening to everybody. Uh, Deeksha here. So I'll be chairing this session. And the motion for today is this house believes that the government should actively promote product creators to prioritize sustainability over innovation. So I'll tell you what exactly adjudication is. So basically, as in adjudication, there are three parts. There's a chair, there's panelists, and there are trainees. So under me today are two panelists who will be working along with me to give the verdict. So what exactly is a verdict? Is a judgment of the debate, what is what happens now. And we will discuss and find out who the winner was. So that's simple terms about what adjudication basically means. So uh, simple rules of adjudication. Um, in Brit I mean, in Asian parliamentary debate, it's not quality, it's not about the quantity of the points. It's about the quality of the points. It's about the explanation that's given. It's about the examples that are given. So end of the debate, there'll be counterattacks for each of the points made by the government side and the opposition side. So what in the end, whose points stand and whose points have more explanation is the one which will uh, be taken into consideration for the edge. So basically, the most important point for the adjudicator is how well the points are explained and how depth the points are explained. So with that, um, I would call upon the Prime Minister to start the debate. I'll repeat the motion once again. This House believes that government should actively promote product creators to prioritize sustainability over innovation. Here, here, PM. Okay, so good evening to everyone present here. Good evening to the chair. Uh, first of all, before I begin, my name is Mansi, and I will be the prime minister uh, from the uh, prime minister. And uh, so the motion we're debating today as told by the chair is about the government from actively promoting product creators to prioritize sustainability over innovation, right? So as the PM, before I get into uh, the reasons why we believe this. Let me define a few points uh, that are, or like a few words in the motion, right? So when we talk about product creators, right, we are talking about product creators that range from like the smallest kind of products, like your, uh, you know, like clothes, uh, clothes and clothing and all of those, to like the biggest ones, like your cars and your, uh, you know, um, planes and uh, all of those, etc., right? And we also talk about product creators that have been, that have established themselves for so. Uh, in so many years and also about product creators who are coming up uh, new like you know new startups and all of that and uh, when we talk about sustainability right so when uh, sustainability is what, what exactly is sustainability it is just the trying to avoid the depletion of natural resources as much as possible and trying to maintain that ecological balance while pr producing anything right and the 
and when we come talk about innovation innovation is always like uh it, it's about creating something new it's about a new idea a new product which is uh, you know innovative or uh, which is 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 really like uh, mind boggling right so the reason we are uh, we as a government believe it's important to you know get the product creators to prioritize sustainability over innovation is that uh, the first thing right why is the government burdened by this the reason we talk about why the government is burdened by this is because whenever there is uh, whenever a product creator is causing us a, a sort of a harm like uh, there are companies that release um, you know harmful chemicals or all of that it ultimately falls upon the government to try and fix that right it falls upon the government to come there and tell the people uh, like you know fix that particular issue and uh, you know make that uh, environment more hospitable for the people around right and the this burden on the government to fix things is what we uh, is is one more thing that we you know are trying to reduce by doing this right because when you're prioritizing sustainability there is a sort of uh, you know uh, uh, this this thing comes into play where we talk about how like when you're creating sustainable products the process itself is very sustainable right because the kind of uh, sustainable uh, products that are being created on all of that are more uh, they they're more um, what do you call them more they have a better rational and they are more collaborative and the thing is because they function well because like right now with people becoming all woke becoming uh, understanding that there is a sort of a certain threat to our uh, lives people need you know these products these sustainable products to be sold to them and when the reason like you know what what the government is trying to say is that when we talk about sustainability we're talking about you know getting products that are sustainable uh, like making sure there's not a lot of waste that is being pr- produced right and um like right now what is uh, the kind of incentive that the gov- how we'll be doing this is that when you need you know the product creators to become more sustainable there are different things or steps that the government can take we can you know uh, there is a, a way you can like you know you can subsidize these products by reducing the tax you can help the startups uh, by funding their projects and all of that if they choose to become uh, a sustainable uh, sustainable product creators right so uh, we have seen that in the past all of this has worked really well in the benefit of the people and the environment as well right when you take like an example uh, here uh, taking an example of a country that is uh, norway so in norway the electric uh, electric car market is very well set up the reason it's very well set up is because the government has decided uh, to take the initiative of um, you know cutting the cost of electricity that has been used to charge these cars so the moment they did that the natural resources that uh, you know they have that they already have can have been harnessed and being exported to different markets right so ultimately what the government is doing is profiting off of the natural resources that already exist without having to worry about them being less for their own country right because you so here what they have what the government has done is that they have incentivized product creators and given an incentive to even the consumers to buy these products so this is essentially what we are trying to uh, you know bring in right and uh, at uh, i also want to point out to the uh, opposition that at no point that we believe that innovation has to completely stop it is just that the important uh, there are more important things to look at at this moment where we are so close to a, a sort of uh, you know this this global warming uh, you know raising uh, rising to its peak and all of that it's much more important for us to look for more sustainable sort of creations or sustainable kind of innovations than just fast paced innovations right so when we talk about um, you know uh, right now there is no incentive for these product creators but the moment the government starts to uh, you know help with startups or uh, help like promote these particular brands uh, or these particular products is when they get the incentive and that is what the government wants to actively do because it's not just like the big things right even the small things that matter and uh, the thing is if uh, you know sustainability creating more sustainable products will directly lead to innovation because uh, you know there are new companies that are already coming up with new ideas better ideas for sustainable development and you have your old companies trying to match up to them and become more you know uh, you know more sustainable by becoming more innovative but a fast paced innovation does not necessarily result in a sustainable development which it inherently presents the problem that you know that i have put forth where i say that you know your sustainability 
is more important right now right and just a fast paced innovation is only going to generate more waste and only going to generate uh, a lot more products than there are consumers which causes a problem to us and when you know so when you consider all of this into uh, you know um, consider all of these points you should uh, it's important to understand that um, we are as a government it's important for us to prioritize the people that we have and the kind of environment the people are going to live in and that is why we believe and also you know helping these people get better alternatives in life right to have better alternatives to live and uh, to survive in this world and that is why we believe that when we are in you know in us prioritizing and promoting you know uh, sustainable development or sustainable innovation to product creators is only going to give them more incentive to become more eco friendly and uh, you know become more sustainable for the future and become much better right and with this i would like to um, end my debate thank you i thank the prime minister from for presenting the case from government side i request the leader of opposition from opposition side to bring in the case here here uh so uh, we will be from the opposition we will be putting forth the mo uh, motion that why prioritizing sustainability over innovation at this moment is not really our way to go and uh, why so uh, across the house we we believe and we know for a fact that we have to save the environment at this point because uh, over time all our actions as humans have uh, resulted in uh, the environment being degraded and put to a harm and all of this sustainability will follow innovation anyway innovation and sustainability will go hand in hand however you look at it because once innovation is done humans generally tend to uh, make that product better one or the other way now why sustainability and innovation are uh, is not really our sustainability is not really the way to go right now is because it comparatively is pretty expensive and it is kind of a luxury thing that not everybody can afford right now why isn't it a luxury thing that everybody can't afford right now is because the technology is pretty primitive because it's the same thing that is being put forth again and again and the technology to make it even better is not available or is mostly expensive in itself and uh, and the human mentality is kind of cheap because we need to afford bigger things at a lower price that is a human way it is natural and by doing that uh, sustainability the sustainable products that are uh, released into the market are kind of expensive at this moment and that is exactly why we need innovation because innovation will bring forth a new product uh, will divert most funds and most big players in the market will divert most of their funds towards making something that is more affordable and more uh, better in the market that it is more eco friendlier also and at this moment uh, fast pace innovation is not what we requires what the government said why we uh, right now uh, innovation is still the technology right now is still primitive it is uh for example however you look at it in any stage of technology in any industry uh we have almost reached our peak the technology cannot be more sustainable or it can be but it is it doesn't make much of a difference but innovating something uh innovating something that is ground breaking or will change the uh, game completely is what we are looking at because once we do that our there is nothing that can limit us because the environment uh, is already taken care of the uh, the, uh, the market is much wider and everybody can almost afford all of uh, all of the products that are more sustainable uh, through innovation sustain and once we innovate this product sustainability will already will follow this these innovation that are already brought into the market um, but if sustainability is so important why aren't companies and the government and the people themselves being more sustainable uh, or or following these sustainable principles right now well because 
uh, they are as i mentioned they are kind of a luxury that most of us cannot afford and uh, government is anyway pushing for the norms and all of the uh, national green tribunals uh, there are organizations such as those that look after the uh, emission standards or the uh, harmful waste put out by most uh, product manufacturers and while already all of those are done uh, i don't uh, see why sustainability is our need of the app because uh, when all of these are looking after by the government and push for uh, the uh, manufacturers can go for and make something much better that is more feasible uh, what if instead of uh, electric vehicles that are right now being pushed into the market that are made more sustainable than it was before what if even electric vehicles are uh, are even electricity produces some sort of waste right the the way electricity is produced and all of that uh, for, for example innovating uh, something that is some pro, some vehicles that run on hydrogen for example which is abundantly available which people are trying to innovate still and push forth into the market electricity will it electricity will be nowhere it will be left in the dust it will be a thing of the past and uh, this is what i'm trying to say that innovation will put uh, will is much better than uh, sustainability at this moment and innovation has risen above all of these pollution and all of these factors that they are looking at because uh, over time we've de- developed so much that everybody knows the harms that they've done towards environment and all of that and everybody is pushing for eco friendly and uh, uh, rules so that uh, we don't harm the environment anymore innovation itself has become kind of sustainable if i have to say and innovation is the way to go even at the moment because at the moment as i said most uh, most technologies and everything feel primitive imagine the doors that we could open by innovating something new the capabilities are endless Pro- product creators cannot only be sustainable because it is costlier the technology available at the moment is again when uh, as i said is on a short leash for example electric cars uh, electric cars before were very expensive and uh, how do i say not very feasible option but after tesla innovated something that uh, is much better than what was available everybody started using it and it reached a wider market and that is exactly what innovation plans to do uh, it it reduces the cost and it uh, sees and it innovators looks to look in a way that uh, everybody re- gets the products and it is more f- a feasible option than compared to uh, more sustainable uh, products for example uh, uh, india recently uh, uh, gave a this emission norms right bs6 engines how many people actually do have bs6 engine vehicles right now not many people right because they recently bought bs4 engines and it's not an upgrade that they're willing to make an upgrade that they're willing to make is probably towards an electric vehicle which is which will be much more available in the far future thank you i thank the leader of opposition for presenting the case from side opposition i request the deputy prime minister from side government to extend the stance here here good evening chair and panel uh, we from side government believe that sustainability is because for the as from the government side we believe that there is immense pressure which is put on the government to actively cater to the needs of the people to somehow convince uh, all these companies which are actually doing more harm to the uh, world and society and environment to somehow uh, be the liable owner and take charge of their wrong doings right what do i mean by that when my uh, prime minister comes and talks to you about the harmful Im- uh, impacts that all these big companies leave on whether it is in terms of using non using conventional methods of 
gaining uh, resources or whether you talk about plastic or all these other unsustainable options we believe that there's a huge amount of pressure which is put on the government to actually uh, find a way to recycle these or to get rid of these the waste the waste which is produced in the environment right and we believe that the government is answerable to the people to society and to higher authorities uh, for for instance the uh, the un uh, the amount of pressure on the government to actually uh, look into all these matter and um, and all these matters right so now when we talk about sustainability right what are the three principles of sustainability on which this is defined right first is the economy the second is society and the third is the environment right so the economy sort of like why is it why is sustainability important is so that we can somehow find a way to build the same products with better efficiencies and one which is economically feasible and one which we can generate profit all right and how and how does people come into this picture of sustainability is because of the fact that if you're not making un if you're making unsustainable products it eventually harms the society for instance if, uh, for, for instance if you look at the case of air pollution it eventually harms the health of the people and the well-being of the people thirdly the, the third packet in this system is the environment right which create which uh, this there's a huge uh, environmental damage which we can see right and that is why we possible right when the opposition comes and talks about how actually building a, a a car which runs on hydrogen is a much more innovative idea than running a car on elect on electricity we believe that yes that might be the better idea but we can but we do not see that coming to life in in the near future anytime soon right it will take another 30 40 years or whatsoever time so we believe that at this moment we've already caused so much of harm and damage to the nature that the only way we can stop the uh, further pervadence of this is by actually leading one step towards a more economical sustainable development right and when you talk about hydrogen car which also falls in the pit hole of uh, sustainable development we believe that that would be something which people can do as a next step it, the, the reason is the, the reason simply being that the government wants to create an awareness among the product creators right why does the government want to create an awareness among products and why is it so necessary for the government to do it is when you look at big uh, automobile countries or uh, or fashion brands at this current moment they do not have a reason to shift their entire base to a more sustainable platform right if you're if you're already running your cars and vehicles on petrol diesel and natural gases all these non-renewable energy resources we do not see why they feel the need or the necessity urgent necessity to shift to a more renewable source of energy un unless the government intervenes into this process right so we believe that the government has to take the initiative otherwise these companies will never have the urge to make the transition right um now why is this that sustainability will actually work for the welfare of the government is because it uh, because when the government starts promoting these product creators to prioritize sustainability it will lead to for, it will lead them to forcefully uh, find better uh, innovative options to actually enhance their existing systems and not only that but also uh, the government being answerable to people will uh, show a better picture that we actually care about the environment and the people and we're actually willing to uh, repay the damage which has which has been caused over so many years right now the various perspectives and various stakeholders in this picture the, the, the there are mainly three stakeholders the government and these the second is the these product creating companies and the third is the consumer government comes into the picture is because the government is answerable at all these various stages whether it's to the people or to higher authorities or to other uh, uh, environmental bodies so we believe that if there's a hu huge amount of uh, pressure on the government to get rid of air pollution or to find ways in order to promote water pollution and the government does not have to necessarily has to take all these steps on their own and there's no burden on these uh, product creating companies to actually pay for the damage that they've created yes they yes they they do pay a certain amount of tax but we do not feel that that is enough right the second is are these product creating companies right we believe that the product creating companies can also gain immense benefit from this because we believe that the government in in the initial days can provide some sort of subsidies for the benefit of uh, these companies so that they can enhance more of their resources and energies to creating a more sustainable product thirdly and lastly the most important parameter is the consumer right we not only get a, a system which works for the well-being of the people and the environment all of these are eventually linked to the environment the consumers have better air to breathe better water bodies less uh, 
uh, less damage to the biologic uh, to the biodiversity of the system right so for these benefits we for, for these reasons we believe that it is utmost importance of the government to uh, to highly prioritize sustainability right and now when the opposition comes and talks about how uh, uh, how sustainability and innovation goes hand in hand and that innovation is we believe that if you look at the uh, history throughout uh, throughout the uh, human time uh, we believe that unless there's a government interve uh, un intervening in these we do not see a radical shift in these companies well, whether you talk about automobile companies we do not apart from tesla and a few other companies which are working on creating hybrid cars and electric cars we do not see the incentive in other companies to actively promote uh, this idea or notion of creating electric cars so we do not uh, rather uh, rather the uh, the innovating in the existing cars which does not necessarily cater to the well-being of the uh, environment right so we do not necessarily believe in any way that uh, unless the government does not intervene that somehow companies will have the desire to uh, to become more sustainable and innovative in uh, trying to save the environment right now secondly when the opposition comes and talks about how sustainability is expensive and it's more sort of a luxury the reason why it's a luxury is because not because of because of the lack of government interference in this right when the government comes and intervenes into these processes and provides a subsidy or some sort of normalization to these companies as my pm said in the case of norway where 70 percent of the cars are electric cars we believe that it will lead to a more prosperous well-being where everyone can actually focus on these issues and actually um it, this will no longer be a, some, a luxury, but rather a, a way of living. And for these reasons, we believe that it's extremely important for the government to intervene in these uh, product creating companies. Very proud to propose the motion. I thank the Deputy Prime Minister. I request the Deputy Leader of Opposition to continue the case from side opposition. Here, here. Good afternoon, everyone. So this is Rishabh I'm, I, and I'm the second speaker from the opposition. So we from the side opposition, we believe that sustainability is basically making things more eco-friendly out of the already available products. And, in, and no doubt it makes the products better and more eco-friendly. We feel that the products available are very much costly and not ideal for the common people. On the other hand, we believe that innovation has huge potential and not only it has potential to make p make products better, but also has the potential to make the products cheap. For example, we have seen, we know that organic food items are not only beneficial for health, but they are also uh, eco-friendly as they don't use pesticides and pesticides when go to into water, they harm the water bodies and all. But how many people actually are able to buy those organic products because they are so costly and the cost is almost around 10 times or to five times that it's almost impossible for common people to go to go into these type of products. Whereas when we see innovation, innovation has infinite possibilities and there is high chance that we can develop some cheaper products. For example, uh, as some of you may be car enthusiasts. I have come up with this example as already introduced by my leader. In case of diesel and petrol cars, to make them more sustainable, India uh, recently mandated BS6 norms. So basically, BS6 is the are the norms for emission and efficiency control. But when the government uh, in, introduced this norm and banned the sale of any vehicle below this category, all the dealers and manufacturers to to so sell all their uh, previous and old products of BS6 and BS3 way, uh, compiling with BS6, BS4 and BS3, they started giving huge number of discounts and suddenly all the people rushed to all these showrooms and uh, quickly bought all these uh, vehicles uh, which were already at low price, price. So what do we see from this? All the people who bought this, these cars already knew that these vehicles are not so much eco-friendly and will produce more emission. Yet, but then also they bought these cars because these were cheap. And that is what we are saying that just by making them more sustainable, you cannot stop people from buying those things because unless these products are cheap, nobody is going to buy them. 
and even if you compare bs6 and bs4 vehicles the amount of emissions is not that huge and so what do we see from this also that sustainability that sustainability has reached has reached a particular saturation level above which it's impossible to uh, obtain much more success out of it so that is a it's high time to improve new things and do much more innovations on the other hand when we see innovations in terms of electric vehicles electric vehicles it's not such that tesla was the only company who came with who came up with this idea many con- companies have been trying but due to constant innovation tesla suddenly came up with an amazing type of battery which suddenly reduced the prices of all the electric vehicles and now electric vehicles which was some at some point of time a distant dream uh, have now suddenly become a reality and people are now using it and in developing countries like india also companies like tata have now started selling electric vehicles so when the government comes and says that no other company is finding any incentive in making electric vehicles we don't really agree with that because we have seen almost every kind of company in the world is now into this electric vehicle market similarly when we see that people are using plastics so all the people already know that plastics are harmful for the environment and but then also they are not going up, upgrading to its sustainable alternatives that is that may be jute bags because jute bags are expensive that is why an innovation was required and people and people invented uh, something known as biodegradable plastic POI. and which is now helping uh, i'll take you later ma'am and which is now helping the environment so that is why we believe that just by sustainable development you don't give enough incentive to the people because one alternative which as pro- proposed by the government is government should start giving subsidies now at w- how many levels you can start giving subsidies because uh, at such a huge scale because the examples which was proposed by the government is some of european or scandinavian countries where the the standard of living is so high that the government is in so much of profits that giving subsidies is easier but in actual countries which are bigger than scandinavian countries like india and united states giving so much of incentives and subsidies is actually not practical and not even good in in long terms also because we believe that innovation is self incentivized and in long term it is going to save you much more money and be more eco friendly and that's why we believe that subsidy is not a only solution because for example if if there are two companies company a and company b and both starts and company a starts manufacturing uh, apparels in eco friendly manner for example by using biodegradable uh, coloring dyes but and or, and even starts manufact and even starts packaging them in Uh, biodegradable um with, uh, in biodegradable materials such as uh, papers or something else but then also company z's product would would be uh, much more expensive than company b which is producing apparels in conventional ways so it's it would be the general incentive of people and mindset of people to go towards company b which is selling all the products at low price and even if you compare all these prices the price of company a would be around 10 times more than the price of company b and that is why even if the government tries to give uh, subsidies on the clothes of company a we believe that then also the com- the prices of uh, company uh, a would be way much higher and that is why we don't believe that this thing is possible in long term uh, compared to that in our case if you give push to innovation there is a high chance that people will uh people will go people will make some cheaper products and certainly we have reached a particular uh, scenario where new innovations will not harm uh, will not harm any will not harm the environment in a much greater extent because there are already existing government policies and which which are there to create a checking mechanism so that a uh, not a very drastic uh, degradation of environment happens that is why we believe that there shouldn't be a certain uh, prioritization towards sustainability thank you i thank the deputy leader of opposition for presenting the case from side up i request the government whip to conclude the case from side government here here
uh, good evening to the chair panel and everybody so i would like to summarize the case from side government so we can from both sides of the house agree that we believe that we need a greener and a more eco friendly way of doing things and that sustainability and innovation go hand in hand right so now we from the side government believe when they come about and tell us that you know innovation will ultimately lead to sustainability it is not a uh, that much of a guarantee or that happening uh, is a very rare case whereas we from the side government believe that sustainability will lead to more innovation and that happening has more of a probability than innovation uh, leading to sustainability right now the people from side opposition uh, live in a very utopic world where they believe they will keep inventing stuff without you know taking sustainability into consideration even after living in this world where you know temperatures are rising every day we know about pollution levels increasing etc this innovation will yield nothing to the planet in the future because they won't be able to you know give any any provide you know the innovation won't be of any use to a dead planet right so uh, why we from the side government believe it is very very important for the government to actively promote product creators who prioritize sustainability is because it will give them an incentive to innovate things that are more sustainable more eco friendly and better for the planet and that is really important at this day and age when the opposition comes about here and talks about things being expensive that is exactly or the sustainable things and organic foods etc being more expensive than the conventional uh, objects or commodities that we buy that is exactly why i believe it is important for the government to interfere and, and actively promote these uh, sustainable products right because when the government promotes it say uh, by means of subsidizing these products or probably uh, reducing taxes or the overhead that it takes to uh, establish such businesses or uh, factories or industries the prices of these products will automatically come down and people will be able to purchase these products right also sustainability uh, uh, as told by uh, the prime minister and the deputy prime minister will be beneficial to the government as well uh, stating the example of norway that was already explained to them when they come and talk about tesla be, uh, not being the only uh, company that produces uh, electric vehicles we totally agree with that and we believe when the government intervenes as in the case of norway not only will the environment be benefiting but also the people living in the country or the region will benefit and so will the country as a whole right and that is why i believe it is it is necessary for the government to come about and interfere because it is really important at this moment to do so right they talk about how it does not make much of a difference if you make something a little sustainable but we believe it makes a big difference especially for the government because at the end of the day as told by the dpm as well it is the burden on the of the government to look after the environment it is the government that will be answerable to the people if living conditions and standards are not met up to and that is why the government should actively promote these sustainable development products right these people go on and on and on about innovation and but they never and while agreeing and stating to us the benefits of sustainability about uh using organic products etc and then they say that won't be affordable and that is exactly when we from the side government come in and tell you that listen the moment the government starts actively promoting these things it will automatically lead to more consumers getting to know about it and buying these products because it becomes cheaper and once people start buying these products the uh, product creators too will have an incentive to innovate more and more in the sustainable field because not just their ethics you know tells them to be more responsible towards the environment and the earth but also because now they have consumers who are buying these products they have the government supporting them and now they have the money that they need to innovate in the field of sustainability and therefore the the price factor that they talk about will automatically come down and people will be able to afford it this is just a small step towards the future that they, these people talk about right we believe if people start taking a uh, sustainability more seriously if they start taking you know green projects and uh, eco friendly means of transportation etc more seriously they will have a better future to live up to right uh, then uh, also 
the reason when they come and tell us they do not see any reason for the government to actively promote sustainable product creators we come and tell you how you know even small government policies like if what about effectively like banning plastics are regulated in a manner and looked after properly and taken care of that it itself even though a small step leads to a big difference right because then the government will not have to spend a lot of the taxpayers money to clean up the plastic waste and make sure that it is recycled reused etc right and that is why we come and tell the opposition that it is necessary for the government to intervene and actively promote sustainability over innovation at the moment because the planet is dying and there will be no use of the innovation if it is not sustainable in the near future pyi ma'am uh, i'll take you later ma'am not right now okay. then uh, uh they come about uh and uh, talk about how the technology in sustainability is very primitive or we have reached the peak of uh, the technology that we can use for sustainability etc and uh, the mass production technology or innovation will be more but we tell you once the government starts helping these industries and these creators by giving them subsidies etc uh, they will have the uh, money effort and support to build about in the in the sustainable environment and therefore Uh, we as the government believe it is very important or rather a duty of the government to make sure that we promote these products because the stakeholder at this moment is not just the environment but it is also the people living under conditions of growing pollution global warming etc and also these uh, product creators who believe in sustainability and just need a little bit of a push and a little bit of an incentive to do something good and promote Uh, a greener way of living and therefore we from the side government are proud to propose i thank the government whip for concluding the speech from side government i request the opposition whip to conclude the debate here here uh good evening everyone so i'm sushma and i'll be the opposition whip for today's debate uh madam speaker let me start off by saying uh that the opposition uh, i mean the government called the opposition a utopian state now uh, let me give you the ideal case scenario which the government is running on and you tell me if that is feasible first of all they come and come here and say that the government will support and the people who are manufacturing will have enough money and support to make sure that the cost prices are reduced throughout the three speeches we do not get any idea as to where this money is coming from right which we believe is the taxpayers money that they are talking about which they are currently using for cleanups and all of those so they are saying that the taxpayers money will be given to producers and corporators to make sure that the products are cheaper first of all they do not also engage on the fact that such Such kind of money is not available in most countries, right? Now they do not engage on the fact that developing countries, third world countries, countries which do not have the resources and the opportunities for such uh, money and for such support from the government. From where does this money come from, right? Now this is the ideal case scenario that they are running on. That suddenly they will have government support, they will have money, the prices will automatically come down. We see no explanation as to how the prices will automatically come down, and uh, they say. That this is how everything is going to be more sustainable. And now uh, another point that they keep on talking about is incentive, right? Now they come out here and say that by subsidizing and by providing help, they are going to incentivize the producers to be more sustainable. Now what we uh, like counter this point on two faces, right? The first thing is that such incentivization is already present for most cases, right? The first incentive is that people are becoming woke, as the government themselves told. So people do want to be uh, more sustainable, and people do want. Want to improve themselves in a way, and uh, the producers themselves want to cater to this set of the people, right? So, like the current rise in electric cars itself shows that there is a lot of incentive in terms of profit, in terms of wokeness of people, in terms of what is better for the environment. That's already available. Now we show to you that this incentive is weak, uh, not enough right now. There are many reasons for this, right? And we clearly explain to you as to why this incentive is not being enough right now. One, uh, because because of the cost and the unavailable unavailability of the resources, and uh, two, as to how uh, like these companies cannot go ahead and do this uh, because of the constraints that they have, right? 
Now coming to how uh, we said that innovation is self-incentivized, right? Now what we mean by that is that innovation is not only helping the consumer, the producer, but also the uh, environment in a way, right? Now uh, the the NO clearly told you as to how innovation is not just about making a product better, but also making the product more efficient, right? Now this efficiency considers everything uh, that we are taking into uh, factor, right? And uh, we also told you as to how innovation has reached a point right now in, in technology, in terms of awareness, that people now uh, recognize the faults and know the solutions that need to be implemented. So this innovation in many ways than not is going to be more beneficial for the society, right? And then, uh, they come out here and say that uh, this fast paced innovation is not going to be a solution, right? Now, uh, like one question uh, to the government uh, on, on this. Like organically sourced food uh, against locally sourced produce and uh, like well uh, subsidized, uh, sorry, well standardized uh, and sustainable clothing versus cheap clothing. Why do people still still go for the cheaper option, right? Now there are two reasons for them to do so. One that they are like not in a place to be able to afford that. Like. Uh, for example, even if I want to buy clothing that has been sustainably produced, I probably do not have the resources or the money to spend 4,000 to, uh, yeah, later in the fifth minute. So I do not have the money to spend 4,000 to 8,000 on clothes, right? I'd rather buy clothes that I get within 200 to 800 rupees. So in that way, even if the government subsidized 50 percent of the entire produce or like the entire cost of production they will still be at least five to ten times more costly because of the limitations in technology and resources right now and we also spoke about the untapped resources and the stagnation of sustainability right so what we meant by that is that we have reached a level wherein everything has uh, uh, reached a certain level of sustainability or a basic standard that everybody has to maintain so for example if a company is aiming to be more innovative that does not mean that uh, sustainability is completely ignored uh, vishwas already told you about how there are uh, many uh, like government agencies there are many uh, different organizations there are emission tests and like different standards that industries have to meet up to so these basic government standards have already been set so the government uh, cannot push for more sustainability in this aspect when the producers do not have anything uh, to improve on right so innovation is necessary to get that step ahead and we also talk about the untapped resources like hydrogen power nuclear power and uh, efficient and alternate sources of energy uh, like uh, solar water and wind energy that have we have tapped only to a certain extent there might be infinite potential in all of this which needs innovation to take that step to take us out of this slump that we are in right this fast-paced innovation is the only thing that can take us out okay i'll take one po at this point the only constraint being is time do you believe that it is faster to innovate in something or to create something which is much more sustainable from a government standpoint yeah okay thank you ma'am now as you yourself have told that the constraint is time we realize that the problem that we have made till now is extremely huge right now even if every single government works 24 hours a day towards making uh, environment better it will still take us a lot of time to get out of this place right which is why we believe that the stagnated sustainable op uh, like option is not the way to go because of that very time constraint that you are talking about just uh, slightly improving something that's already so horrible is not the solution we need something groundbreaking we need to take that risk of innovating something way better even if that happens in a fast-paced way even if that happens in the next two to five years that is way better for being a stagnated uh, sustainable uh, company which which is just a facade of being sustainable which is just a facade of being eco-friendly but in reality is not doing anything to help the consumers or the environment or the company in itself and this is why we from the opposition believe that innovation is the way to go and that's why we take the debate. Thank you.
I thank all the speakers for the wonderful debate. I would request 10 minutes for me and the panelists to come to a verdict. Um, just 10 minutes. Thank you. Good evening to all present. I hope you're enjoying the show and learning something valuable. The results will be announced shortly. And in the meantime, I'll be covering a segment for you guys uh, on the World EV Day. Many of you may not have heard about it, seeing as how today is, in fact, the first ever World Electric Vehicle Day. It's the inaugural year, and it's been founded by many organizations, mainly being uh, Green TV and ABB and Vanarama. I'm going to introduce Vanarama a little here. Uh, Vanarama is the leading organization in the UK for the leasing of private and commercial vehicles. Now, they conducted a survey. With the survey with their customers, they found out that about 83% of their customers were actually considering moving to an EV for the next commercial vehicle, but about 90% that's a big number, did not know enough to make that change. So in accordance to the problem that most people do not know about the necessary impact that their purchases have and the options they have available to them to make a better decision, World EV Day was founded to bring this information out to the public and help people make better choices and bring awareness to the crisis that is um, the shortage of fossil fuels and the pollution that they cause when you refer to a conventional IC vehicle. Now, the aim was to equip the general population with the information to make these decisions. But not only that, it's to urge governments and bigger organizations to set up the infrastructure that's required to support such a network of EVs because compared to your usual combustion engines that require a petrol bump, pet, uh, petrol bunk like at intervals of maybe 10 kilometers even, that's totally fine. And if you go to rural areas, even if it's at 100 kilometers a bunk, you can generally get decent mileage on a vehicle at 18 to 20 kilometers on a four-wheeler, which will carry you through most of your journeys. But when it comes to an EV, you need a charging port, which we don't have set up. You need the infrastructure set up to support EVs. So it urges governments to take the necessary actions and steps to make the change towards a greener future. Now, by percentage, if we look at it, uh, Norway has one of the greatest populations, like at around 50%, little less than 50% of people who have adapted to and adopted electric vehicles over conventional uh, internal combustion vehicles. And then why is this? Norway has a very clear policy on zero emissions, and the government is very dedicated to making sure that they reach this goal by the year 2025. So in accordance to this, they have put down many policies, taken many actions, such as uh, incentivizing EVs by uh, giving tax exemptions and toll exemptions uh, for electric vehicles, along with many other things like uh, extra customs on imports of other vehicles. Now, this promotes the use of EVs in the general public, and we would like to see other governments taking similar actions to promote the use of EVs. On national note, uh, the adoption of EVs in India especially is quite slow because, like I said, it takes the required infrastructure. And it's hard to find a petrol bunk, let alone a charging spot or a charging post in rural areas. So, But even so, uh, the adoption of EVs is not going unnoticed. There are movements happening, there are small steps being taken. Blue Smart, for example, is an all-electric taxi service that set out on a 1,376-kilometer, approximately, journey from Delhi to Mumbai. 
in uh, Mahindra e Vetrio or Verito, sorry, to show that long distance travel in India via an EV is totally possible. And it was estimated to have yielded a 94 kilogram reduction in CO2 emissions compared to your traditional internal combustion vehicle. Also, Tata Motors announced that it will be joining the global movement as one of the founding partners of World EV Day. They have joined hands with ABB, Vanarama, and the others with Green TV to promote uh, the use of EVs locally. Now, if EVs are so good for us, what are the problems or holdups hindering the adoption of EVs? Like I said, there is the problem of the establishment of the net necessary structures. But right now, the biggest problem is uh, that of finance. So in a country like India, where we do not have local manufacturing plants in a large scale for EVs, it tends to be that you generally have to import a decent, good quality EV, and that tends to be expensive. Most middle class families are looking for a vehicle in the range of 4 to 16 lakhs, but most of the actually decent EVs come around easily at 20, 25 lakhs. So that is one of the major issues when it comes to the adoption of EVs. And then there's the problem of the government setting up the structure for the charging posts all over the place like it it hurts it, it's very bad when a company cannot support vehicles because you take out an ev and you're driving you decide to go on a long drive you forgot to charge your car completely and now you're stranded because there's no charging post in the nearby vicinity this is not really a problem with internal combustion vehicles because we've already adapted to it. We've already set up petrol bunks, stations. So that is not a problem. We've adapted to the situation. But times are changing and we now have to stay away from fossil fuels. We have to move on to more cleaner sources of energy like electricity. And for that, we need the government to make a move on setting up this structure, this network of charging posts that is essential for the ad adapting of electric vehicles. Then the list continues with the problem of being, uh, like I said, the production of EVs is not as large scale compared to IVs, which are available in all sorts of different models, all sorts of different prices. There's a vehicle probably in your price range for the exact specifics you're looking for. But when it comes to EVs, the options narrow down a lot. And that really hurts a consumer that's looking to buy an EV for everyday use. If you want a family car, a family SUV, for example, you can get to a decent one in the general vicinity of about 15 to 32 lakhs. You can get a really good car for that. But if you're looking at a decent SUV EV, you're looking at easily 50 lakhs more. Like I was looking at some of the EVs and there was a new model being released by Audi that's at one crore and that's exorbitant. So that is another major problem in the adopting of EVs. So we as a people need to urge the government to incentivize the adoption of EVs before it's too late, before we run out of fossil fuels, before we have no other choice before we pollute the world beyond saving. So that's all I'd like to say about the World EV Day. I hope that this day in the many more years to come uh, incentivizes people to, more, uh, to learn more about EVs, to learn more about the impact they have on the environment, to choose safely and more uh, to be no, more knowledgeable when they make their choices for the better future of our uh, of humanity in general. So I'd like to end this and continue with the results, if you would.
Oh, yeah, sorry about that. I, uh, if you like this segment about World EV Day, there's also a YouTube channel, Team Inferno, on YouTube. You can search for it. We post weekly content informing general public about many things. It's very informative. It's, there's a lot to learn. It could be fun learning. So please subscribe, watch our videos, Team Inferno on YouTube. So to be honest, this was a very difficult debate for me and the panelists to come to a conclusion. Main reasons being that it was very close and each of the speakers actually got what the important points are. Um, what I believe was like they all dis uh, understood the point that they have to speak about three components here. That being government, people and the product creators and all of them actually touched upon it and explained it with very good examples. So it make it made it a little difficult for me and the panelists to come to a conclusion. But um, this is and still like after a little bit of brief discussion, we have come to a conclusion that the government takes it. Uh, I'll explain to you why basically being uh, the government took a lot of time to explain why it is absolutely needed and it's the need of the hour, and it is really urgent for people to like concentrate more on sustainability over innovation because innovation will take a little time, even if it if the end goal of innovation is still to I mean, solve any of the problems that are there. We do not have the time and the clock is ticking. So sustainability with the all products already there is what will have to be done. Uh, the government did a brilliant job in establishing why the government has to do it particularly because if the government doesn't pressurize the product creators and the people to accept these alternate solutions, people are never going to accept because people are naive and people are never going to believe that alternatives need to be taken into consideration. So that's the reason the government has to pressurize and the government has to step in. And I get the fact that the opposition was continuously asking the government this very important question of how they're going to do it. I did get that question too. But um, if the government took more priority on establishing why it is needed and why the government has to do it, I will buy that point. Um, I, 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 I like the way the government understood the main stakeholders being the consumers and the product creators and uh, and the government itself and how they neatly explained how with the example of Norway and certain countries of how su subsidies are being given to push forward alternate solutions which will solve the problems that are being there in the world. So and how they believe that all these problems which are being put by the opposition can be solved only if um, the government steps in. So the uh, opposition kept talking about um, the opposition kept talking about how Sorry, um, the opposition kept talking about how, uh, uh, I mean, sustainable products are a luxury. So the government clearly establishes this point that, see, unless the government takes a step in, the price of the products will not come down. Unless the government decides that the tax of the products need to be reduced, the price of the products will not come down. So that is the reason the government has to come in here. So um, I, it would be very um, bad of me if I don't mention the good points which were brought out by the opposition. The opposition did a brilliant job in ex explaining about how um, sustainable products are a luxury and everybody in developing countries especially cannot afford it. And uh, like they also gave me some beautiful examples of how there are um, uh, rules being uh, put in that you don't use plastics, you use jute rather and how organic farming is being used. And they also gave me a brilliant example of BS6 and how to like, um, because BS6 was put forward, people started selling BS6 four and BS3 at cheaper prices and people took that because price is the most important point for people. But all that keeping aside when the government takes this huge burden of establishing to me that it's a need of the hour and the government has to take necessary steps and it is absolutely necessary to give more priority to sustainability over innovation. I think that gave me a little bit hint to be like a little towards the government because let's be honest, both of them had this clear idea that sustainability and innovation go in hand, go hand in hand. So it becomes very difficult for me uh, to like, because they themselves did not give me this clear idea of what they believe is most important. And they believe both go in hand in hand. Like if sustainability is there, innovation will come. And if innovation is there, sustainability will come. I think when with this being run in the debate for such a long time, it becomes important for me to 
give the debate to the ones who gave me a solution to the problem. The problem being pollution, the problem being global warming. And that was given by the government. This is the reason me and the panelists have come to a consensus and the debate goes to the government. Uh, I hope uh, the speakers had a lot of fun debating this one because as, as the judge, this was like a real task for me to come to a conclu uh, conclusion. Um, I would take this opportunity to like give a conclusion to from side Depsoc. Um, we were truly honored to work with in Team Inferno and to conduct this debate. It was a wonderful experience for me and for all the speakers and the panelists and all the viewers here as well, I believe. So it was a wonderful learning experience also because uh, I got to know a lot of different thought process to this problem which exists and which was amazing for me. Um, I would like to thank uh, all the members of DEPSOC, the speakers who and the, all the other organizers who've taken a lot of effort to make this event possible. I have to also thank the team Inferno and all the people who have made this, uh, uh, this session so amazingly well organized that there were no there were no problems that were caused at any point it was very smooth running and to thank give a big thank you and big shout out to team inferno i hope you guys I, you guys are doing really amazing good stuff in um uh, with all your products and with all your uh, plans being executed beautifully i hope you guys continue the same i hope we keep having these collaborations regularly um uh with this i would like to say thank you for this amazing session i hope to See you all soon again. Uh, this was an amazing time for me. Thank you so much.